My name's Kevin Cummins, I'm a photographer. I was born in Withington, Manchester. A lot of people know me just as a City fan and a lot of people know me for photographing Manchester bands. I started my career by photographing David Bowie when I was at art school. Photographed Queen, photographed Sex Pistols, photographed everybody really. The first game I remember going to was City Leicester in 1961 which was the first game of the season. I always remember that first game where you walk in through the, the narrow passageways going to the ground and then actually in the ground you see this big expanse of green and it was sky blue, it was an August day, it was beautiful and I'd just never seen colours like it. So how I got involved with working with uh, City initially was when we won the League Cup in 1976 my sister, who was about 11, uh, wrote to the club to ask them if she could have a picture taken with the League Cup. And they told her they didn't have anyone who could take photographs. And she said, well, my brother's just stood, um, at art school, so why don't you ask him? So they asked me, asked me if I'd take a picture with her and any other kids who wanted their picture taken with it. And then they'd asked me if I'd photograph the man of the match after the game. It's very odd, isn't it, looking at it and not seeing the ground there anymore. I think that road probably went right through my seat. I used to go in a pub up the road called the Gardener's Arms, and it was like a mini hacienda in a way. Rob Gretton would be there, Mike Picker in me, Marquis e. Smith had come in there. Everyone was in there. But most bands were blues, um, and I think it kind of appealed to the artier end of Manchester. I think it's really great that Puma understands the link between City and the Manchester music scene. Last season we had that great Hacienda kit, and this season we've got this Paisley kit, which looks brilliant on Blossoms. I really love it, and I think a lot of blues will like it too. I always wanted to get uh, Man City in the NME whenever I had the opportunity and Oasis for me was a gift but my editor was a Southampton fan and uh, we did a whole shoot of them in London wearing City kits and he wouldn't put them on the cover but then a couple of months later once the mayhem started this was like mid 94 uh, I did another big session with them in Manchester and we did pictures all around the town centre and then I brought them down to Main Road thinking we could do some shots outside with the mosaic actually, I wanted to photograph them under that mosaic and we did those and then noticed the doors were open and no one, but nobody was bothered and we just walked into the ground and sat in the north stand and took some pictures around there as well and then when we were coming out I noticed the huge advertising board opposite the main stand. And to me it works perfectly as a picture because it's got Liam's shirt matches the brickwork around the ground and there's a car in the background that's the same colour and it ended up being a really beautiful picture with the sky blue of City's shirt just standing out from all that colour. My daughter was born on the 10th of April, a Saturday. Um, when City were away at Ipswich. It was the only game I missed that season, actually. Um, I've never forgiven her for it. On the Monday when we were going home, we lived in Didsbury. We came down past the ground and I stood outside the mosaic and just held her up in front of it. I didn't think I wanted her to be a City fan or anything. I wanted her to make her own mind up, but I liked the idea of having that moment. It was like her first picture taken outside of hospital and I wanted it to involve something that had just been the longest constant in my life, Man City. I was commissioned to do a piece about three Manchester bands and Joy Division were the last one of the three we were doing and they wanted to do the pictures on a Saturday because they worked 
and I didn't because I'd be going to the match and then the match was called off because um, it was a cup third round tie and the two teams who we could play hadn't finished their second round game. So I was able to shoot on Saturday and I was worried that the snow might date the photographs and that thinking journalistically we'd be coming out a couple of weeks later and so my editor told me to take quite a few indoor shots but do some in the snow as well and the reason for doing the shot on this bridge originally was everybody wanted to get out of Manchester as quickly as possible and you know it was always like that idea of looking to London for fame and fortune and I was going to shoot them on the brow of the bridge looking south as if that's where they wanted to go and I was down on the roadside trying to get them into some shape that they were ignoring so I came round and started to walk up the bridge and looked at them and it looked so bleak and so I, it was a light, nice architectural shot rather than a band shot and I thought I'd take it for myself I never thought anybody would use it and um, over the years it's become so iconic, I guess, that it's become the shot that defines the band. Well, Ian Curtis was the only one of the band who was remotely interested in football, so whenever we got the chance, we'd be talking about the game and so on. And Ian, you know, Ian's ex-partner, ex ex-wife, told me they were looking to live on Main Road at one stage because Ian wanted to live near the ground. And then when I was doing the Man City book, I happened to meet Ian's daughter for the first time for a long time, Natalie, and she told me she was studying photography and I wanted to get to know her a bit better. And I said to her, why don't you come and assist me while we're doing the city book? And she loved it. She loved the connection with her father and she liked the connection with her father's ex-friends and colleagues. And um, after she'd done about three or four games with me, she turned up at the next one wearing a city scarf and she said, that's it. She said, your team and my dad's team are mine now. Well, I've photographed Oasis outside the Peveril. I, I kind of like using Manchester landmarks for photographs because I think historically, you know, you don't know whether they're going to be here. It's like the Joy Division Bridge, the view changes so often. So I think it's a nice way of documenting something and placing it in time by photographing a band around. Oasis at the time were playing small clubs, but they were saying, oh, you know, when we make it, the first thing we're going to do is play Main Road. We're going to do a gig there. So I never really thought it would get to that stage and it was incredible when it did. It's been quite difficult sometimes balancing watching City with um, working all over the world shooting musicians. Um, occasionally I've had to come back from the States for an important game and then go back out there. Uh, but generally I've managed to do it without missing many games. I think I've only missed about 20 home games since 1961, which isn't that bad really.